many of them don't understand yoga the so called great yoga masters also don't understand what yoga is many people think yoga means yoga asana physical exercise physical exercise is only one step in yoga when you say yoga you think that sitting in the posture doing exercise that's good fine but that is only one step in how many steps eight eight steps ashtanga yoga explains yoga in eight steps so the first one is yama niyama see sanskrit and malayalam based we add a if it is not the it becomes your hindi version yama niyama asana asana pranayama pratyahara pratyahara so generally out of eight steps people call this is equal to yoga but this is not yoga this is yoga asana this can be only yoga asana these two are very famous pranayama and yoga and this is also famous samadhi which is called meditation pranayama breathing practice asana is generally people call yoga and samadhi generally people understand it is meditation so there are many ways of explaining this this one term sir pratyahar pratyahar pranayam ke baad jo bhojan hona chahiye wo hai na that is something pratyahar dharana dhyana samadhi these are nothing to do with ahara okay this opposite to ahara in case if you want to explain so yama is not after that the yama comes and picks you up that yama is not yama there is only one person who touched the first step and became very famous and that is mahatma gandhi nindra what was his practice dharma shaila ka dono what was his practice in fighting against british people ahimsa non violence ahimsa that ahimsa is called yama 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 means non violent non violent doesn't mean only not killing someone you will never get angry non violent means you don't get angry you may see something wrong but still you will not get angry not in public even at home you will not get angry on you also many people are angry on themselves yama non violent never become violent never become violent also is a equivalent to or maybe you should also look at them as they will also not enjoy great happiness and jump on happiness in bhagavad gita it is slightly explained dukkheshu anudigna mana sukheshu vigada spraha veeda raga bhaya krodha sthita dir munirichade sthita pratna 
The Sthida Pratna is one person who will not get angry. Sthida Pratna. Sthida Pratna. So, Yama is non-violence. Niyama? Generally, Niyama we say that the rules. But Niyama in Yoga Asana is not rules. It is called self-made rules. Self-discipline. This is non-violence. This is Self-discipline. I am self-discipline. What is my self-discipline? I decide I will do only this. Suppose you take these two together. Non-violent and self-discipline. That's enough. If you are these two, your life is good. People don't have self-discipline. How many of you have self-discipline? Punctuality could be one discipline which I and you exactly reach the place at least a few minutes early never get delayed when you eat make your plate clean don't waste and eat as much as you want not more not less because somebody is giving you eat more when you have to spend money from pocket you don't eat There are a lot of people like that. No? If somebody is giving free, fine, very good. So you should have a discipline which you decide this is what I am and go according. In your ways of talking, dealing with the people, the way you sit, the way you discuss with the people, the way you think, and intellectually self-disciplined, socially self-disciplined, spiritually self-disciplined. Physically self-discipline. Physical self-discipline. Maintain your health. That is not after asana. Maintain your health, then come to asana. When you sit in the crossed leg, you must be able to sit like this. When? Only when? You are disciplined. You are not disciplined, what will happen? You will sit in asana. But as soon as you are out of exercise, again, wrong things you will. There are some people, very disciplined, Thursday, no non-vegetarian. Monday, no non-vegetarian. Rest of the days, eat as much as you can. Compensate this also. Which God understands Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Many people believe that Saturday is for Shiva, Monday is for this God. They don't take weekly off. God does not have God even don't, does not understand which is Monday, which is Saturday, which is Friday. For Devi Friday. What a stupid people here. Now. How do Devi understand which is Monday, Tuesday? Do they keep the English calendar every day? <laughs> so somebody is coming on Friday, so let me give more Ashirwad. I used to feel fun. Most of the Jodish also prescribe Friday o temple mein jana hai. Kya sir Friday o temple mein o devi rete kya? Baaki din chutti pe jate kya? Correct? No, that is a that is a stupid niyam. See, do you eat only one day? All other day don't you eat? The niyam, that niyam, a self-discipline is to be maintained every moment in life. Every moment in life. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Anta kalecha manases maren. The last moment you think about me, I will take care of you. Who knows which is your last moment? Nobody. Nobody knows. So <laughs> indirectly, what is it? Think about me all the time. See, the God is very chalu. <laughs> So no God told so far you come only on Friday I will bless you. See that opening temple is the priest and the committee who decides. Strategy of priests. Strategy of the location and time again. When you go to Kerala you get palpaism. 
రైస్ ఇన్ మిల్క్ దట్ ఈస్ ద ప్రసాద్ అదర్వైజ్ యూ గెట్ జాగ్రీ యాడ్ ఇట్ విత్ రైస్ నెక్స్ట్ స్టేట్ యూ గో టు కర్ణాటక యూ గెట్ ఎలో రైస్ యాజ్ ద ప్రసాద్ యూ గో టు ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ యూ గెట్ లడ్డు యాజ్ ద ప్రసాద్ క్యా విష్ణు కేరళ మే జాకే పాల్ పాయసం ఖాతే ఓ హైదరాబాద్ మే ఆకే లడ్డు ఖాతే క్యా సి దిస్ ఇస్ ప్రాక్టీస్ లోకలీ ప్రాక్టీస్డ్ నథింగ్ టు డూ విత్ గాడ్ ఆచార్య ఇస్ డిఫరెంట్ సో దర్ ఫర్ డోంట్ నో డోంట్ నో డైల్యూషన్ ఆన్ సెల్ఫ్ డిసిప్లిన్ ఆచార్య ఇస్ డిఫరెంట్ సెల్ఫ్ డిసిప్లిన్ వాట్ మీ మీన్ విత్ సెల్ఫ్ డిసిప్లిన్ యు హావ్ యువర్ డిసిప్లిన్ సో వాట్ విల్ హ్యాపన్ యు విల్ హ్యావ్ మెయింటైన్ హెల్త్ ఇన్ యూ if you have a self discipline on your body i am 25 years last 25 years 60 kg 59.5 60.5 61 or 59 i cannot give lecture on yoga if i don't maintain self discipline in my life whatever you practice only you must teach right no you can teach and then you become sick i will stop this business if i don't practice this no sick i have not seen a doctor for last 25 years not even for any disease in my life and i keep on traveling i keep meeting doctors only to give lectures <laughs> internationally i have given lectures for doctors also but niyama self discipline is must we have self discipline i will not eat more than this much but somebody gives rasagula again you will jump <laughs> self discipline he has got because he is not able to control the desire control is also become part of niyama self discipline then comes asana what is asana sukhasana you must feel comfortable while sitting you feel comfortable in sitting i don't know how many of you noticed you feel comfortable sitting like this sometimes but this is sometime only you are comfortable but after some years you will have problem so how should you sit exactly 90 degree while sitting you must have your posture exactly 90 degree like this sit like this exact 90 degree so the backbone becomes straight your legs become straight if you are sitting on a chair assume you are not sitting on a chair if you are sitting cross legged on the floor you will become the shortest and your all life aura becomes simplest simplest therefore you will have more energy so sitting cross legged on the floor is best but if you are not practiced and then you start sitting and your legs are paining that cannot be called asana sukha asana one important thing you must feel comfortable that's why people lying down on the floor is comfortable so most of the asana we should practice four pranayama we allow people to lie down on the floor so the best thing is lying down on the floor but when you lie down like this you have two troubles your back here you will have a pain and backbone you have a body like this generally some turn like this so this part will not touch you on the ground so you will have a problem so pranayama practice we generally suggest people to lie down on the tummy okay so we have a pranayama practice where we will allow people to lie down on the tummy so when you take breath you will see your tummy goes in and come out don't you and that practice we will teach while pranayama so i have a small cd in which 20 minutes of pranayama practice is there okay where you will know that you are breathing knowing breathing is pranayama very simple you when you sit like this you don't know that you are breathing do you know that you are breathing you don't know while eating you must know that you are eating while breathing you must know that you are breathing how do you know you are breathing just practice this for few days you will feel very comfortable and that too anayasena shwasam anayasena shwasam anyway we are struggling with all the other things in life at least breathing has to be anayasam without exerting can you take us normal enjoying breathing my guru used to say you must enjoy breathing and then feel there are two streams running and then you are sitting beside it 
two streams running and you are sitting beside it in the middle of it how it will be two streams running and you are sitting in the middle you will enjoy right so there are two streams running and you know that it is running and you enjoy it not the uh, cold problem <laughs> the air breeze goes inside air comes out whereas you can see lot of people who teach pranayama like oof all the troubles will be there for you after some time because pranayama ena yukte ena sarva roga samarah ayukta abhyasa yoga ena sarva roga samudbhavah pranayama ena yukte ena sarva roga samarah if you do pranayama in the right style you will never have diseases ayukta abhyasa yoga ena if you do in the wrong style every disease will come to you why people get disease because of two reasons one bad breathing practice second one bad eating practice just control these two through pranayama and niyama these two three things are there your body is perfect and you are a strong man why strong yama non violent what is happening to your body does it have something happen to your body when you get violent every body gets a change in chemistry when you become violent when you get angry you know what will happen when you get angry what will happen breathing change breathing change happens why because your body require more oxygen suppose you become violent then pranayama cannot be practiced a person who practices pranayama will never get yeah violent also. both are related why whenever you get angry your breathing rate will change three things will change your breathing rate one is hurry when you are in a hurry when you are worried when you eat more curry <laughs> hurry worry curry these three things will create your oxygen content requirement more and you will start breathing more assume you are a pranayama expert whenever you are in a hurry or in a worry you want more oxygen if you are already a pranayama expert you will take a deep breath you want more oxygen body will say i will give you more oxygen take a deep breath <sighs> all problems will go your non violent nature will go you become cool assume you are not a pranayama expert and you take a deep breath that will be the last breath <laughs> that is what is called heart attack <laughs> you become angry violent emotional that is the time when people get heart attack three problems one is diabetics because of no self discipline no asana practices any sugar patient work well eat less not more of food consumed and maintain equal not when you get disease don't do this and in life it should be practiced some people when they become heart problem heart patient or when they wanted to have some problem with the heart respiratory problem they go for pranayama no it's not a treatment none of this is a treatment in life to health it is a maintenance of health you have two things when your car is bad you sell it for maintenance or you sell it for repair car is bad you should repair it yes and maintenance is a normal thing which you should do so normal maintenance is this so your manas yama depends on manas you are getting angry not from the body from the manas but it has an influence in the body sharira manaso yoga paraspara manubrajit aadhara aadheya bhavena tapta jya kadayoriva anything you understood very good sharira manaso yoga the body and the manas they are related yoga again the word yoga here the yoga means related 
ശരീര മനസ്സോ യോഗ ദേ ആർ ലിറ്റഡ് ദേ ആർ മിക്സ്ഡ് ടുഗദർ ഹൗ ആധാര ആധേയ ഭാവേന തപ്താജ്യ ഘടയോരിവ ഐ ഹാവ് എ ബർതൻ ഗ്ലാസ് ഹിയർ പുട്ട് ഹോട്ട് വാട്ടർ ഇൻസൈഡ് വാട്ടർ ലെപ്പൺ ദ ഗ്ലാസ് വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ഹീറ്റഡ് അപ്പ് അസ്യൂം ഐ പുട്ട് കോൾഡ് വാട്ടർ ദിസ് വിൽ ബിക്കം കോൾഡ് കറക്റ്റ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ യുവർ ശരീര വിച്ച് മനസ് യു ഹാവ് ഹോട്ട് മനസ് യു ഹാവ് യുവർ ബോഡി വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ഹീറ്റഡ് അപ്പ് ദാറ്റ്സ് വൈ വെൻ സംബഡി ഗെറ്റ്സ് ആംഗ്രി his eyebrow will go up and up wrinkle will start coming cheeks will become reddish and nice kadagali will come on face sir ye to chitta nirodha yoga aisa kyu kaha jata hai chitta vritti nirodha it is written by ramana maharshi and he says and he says after some shloka chitta vritti nirodha is like ജാലപക്ഷിവത്തിനം keep a bird in a nest you can keep a bird in a nest the time you open bird will fly in sitting in the posture you are comfortable peace of mind but come out of the puja room you are violent again while eating you are hungry is satisfied you stop eating again you are feeling hungry aise ho to kaise you understood no the burden is filled only when you pour water stop pouring it leaks i said burden se kuch fayda hai kya okay so ramana maharshi has read it very carefully thoroughly analyzed by most of the swami ji's around him okay so chitta vritti cannot be controlled by pranayama no treatment these are not treatment but today people are selling it like a capsule two days come to me i will teach you yoga asana pranayama come to me i will teach you this no it cannot be it has to start from non violent that is a practice in life you must practice it for some time niyama asana pranayama pratyahara once you reach into that level your indriyas panchendriyas have to be controlled the panchendriya control is called pratyahara controlling your indriyas that means what i am not looking outside doesn't mean my eyes are closed eyes are open but i am not seeing i will see only what is good i will not see bad things controlled panchendriyas i will only hear good things not bad things there are some people they will always see only bad things good things can never be appreciated nice joke is a somebody have a wonderful good dog and he made the dog to practice to catch the duck the duck will be in the lake i will shoot the duck and dog will go and then get the duck and surrender to the master can you know how the dog will go dog will walk on the <coughs> dog will walk on the water so this man was giving training to the dog for walking on the water water and he felt very happy because now dog can walk on the water and he felt very happy and he called one of his friend he called come i will show you a trick and he has shot at one duck dog went walking picked up the duck and came back and he asked my his friend now what do you say oh your dog doesn't know how to swim <laughs> see with all the positive things which we have there are people who will only see the negative things people cannot appreciate sometimes you do the best thing they will only tell you troubles can you just get out of that feeling where your panchendriyas will never have a 
negative feeling, only positive in attitude. Here it is only non-violent, but here positive attitude, no negative attitude, no unwanted desire, good thoughts only. And once you have this, now here is only positive. Now next is dharana. What is dharana? I will not think anything. No desire at all. Desireless. <coughs> I will just see. I will be only a watchman. Whatever happens, I don't care. I will just keep watching. No reactions. Can you control your reactions? That means what? Your indriyas are not outside. It is totally inside. All that you know is only what happens internally, not outsidely. All the indriyas are submerged inside. That becomes the level where you have dharma. Next is dhyana. Now indriyas are inside, what are you doing? You are imagining, seeing. You are imagining, you are listening. You are imagining, you are touching. All that is inside, imagination only. Now no imagination also. What will happen? Only one concentrated effort. Now what happens to us, you are listening to me, you are also seeing here. Your processing is happening twice and you also know somebody is beside you. You also touch someone be between. You are also smelling the things around. Sometimes you also taste. Yeah. So all the indriyas are also active and you cannot do that. Can you just be concentrated only in one activity? You will touch, you will taste, you will also smell, you will also have seeing that. That can never be an external object, it has to be an internal object. Totally inside. Jhana. Now this happens in some time after bhajans. Heavy bhajans, continuous bhajans. People get into dhyana. Lot of rishis are there. They just get into dhyana. They have only hridayam, nothing else. All desire inside, externally, unaware. They will see, but now will not see. You are also into dhyanam sometime. You know when? Now you are attending my class. In the beginning, all of you are looking at my face and dress. When I started talking, your ear is only listening, you are seeing, but you are not watching. You understood? You are seeing, but your eye is open, but you are not seeing me. But now when I said you are seeing me now. Now when you started seeing me, your listening capacity come down. When I said just now listening capacity come down, you started shifting concentration from eye to ear. Yeah. Yeah. Does it not happen? So you keep shifting from one indriya to another indriya. Now you are listening to me. And therefore, you are not hearing the sound of the fan. Now you know that some fan is making sound. Because now I told you, you started concentrating on the other frequency also. You know your indriyas can be totally in your control. And all of us have this capacity. That's why when somebody listens to some talk, some lecture, they will totally get emerged in that. They will not even know what is happening. Somebody told me they didn't know the time was passing. Why? Because you are merged inside the class. You forget about that. Now when you sit in, interestingly, will you know that you are hungry? No. You may be feeling very hungry at 1 o'clock, but sitting in an interesting class, you will forget about it. But assume the class is boring, 12 o'clock you will start feeling hungry. That time, watch, we told 15, now we told 20. 35 Correct, no? Until the time I told you it is 1.15, you have never seen your watch. See, your dhyana is your concentration. You can change it to wherever you want. And here, even while concentrating, your brain is working. Eyes are open, but it is not seeing. Ears are open, but you are not listening. You are totally internal, but your brain is Functioning. Assume you take an EEG, electroencephalogram. Electro 
encephalogram the ecg you know cardio instead of that electroencephalogram if you take generally your brain will start functioning like this brain function keep on thinking sometimes it will not think again it will start thinking what do you think something you think no time you can keep your brain without thinking only when you are deep sleep but even deep sleep when you have a dream it will start working correct so throughout it's working once it is not working you are a dead person that's what is called a coma coma stage brain is not working they will just lie down like this no reactions no only heart is working because it pumps it works no reactions if you see somebody also you cannot even smile somebody comes you cannot even cry sometime water will be coming from the eye people say that they are crying actually they no feeling it just dead coma stage and they will make it push stop after 7 days <laughs> doctors <laughs> krishna rama govinda before that stage is that coma stage can you live and just do every action and this will not be there this will be only like this that's called samadhi dead but brain is not working is it possible yes it is possible most of the time most of the people have this capacity but not continuously for some time at least do you think when you wanted to do something all the time without the thinking can you do things many people say no we cannot right when you cook do you think how much salt is to be put or just put if you are an expert cook you will just take it and put it will be exactly what is required right when you drive do you think automatically automatically things will happen you are not using your brain while driving in the beginning you are a learner your brain vibration will be like this clutch application break that to go like this correct now but if you are an expert driver do not need to be so well do you think i will like this you will keep talking to someone you will keep driving you will also put tabla on your steering and you will hand will go on right when you have to turn right when you go back to your house do you have a confusion whether this road is to be taken this road is to be taken no you will just try or you just park when you go back home you have to see oh this is my mother <laughs> this is my wife this is my kid do you think your brain is used or not yeah automatically it goes right why because you are in samadhi your brain is not working you can do many things but can you do everything like that without using brain is the question i have been tested putting electroencephalograph during my lectures do you think i am thinking before talking to you no. do you think while chanting shloka do people use brain and think and chant no it just comes so if you can do cooking if you can drive if you can lecture in samadhi state that means what your brain is not working when your brain is working you become tired brain is not working you will never become tired <coughs> anything you do with your brain you will become tired so you are listening to lecture you are not tired because you are in samadhi state you will listen but not in the buddhi where are you listening from your heart where does the lecture go lecture goes into your heart suppose i am talking and then you are started processing it in your brain you will become more tired you cannot sit for long time but assume it goes into your heart i will be inside your heart and i am talking to you now therefore your brain process will not happen when you read interestingly when you read you can read hours together if you are not interested and try to read half an hour you read you will become tired because half an hour continuous tedious tedious reading is equal to 3 hours of walking physically you will feel tired and you will require water but if you are enjoying it you will not require so can you do so we don't talk about samadhi sitting in a 
posture, close your eyes, meditate, open your eyes and walk out. That is not meditation. Meditation in every action. So Samadhi is meditation in meditation in action. This is what we teach. Not that you start doing it only half an hour every day. Morning or evening. Like a medicine prescription. No. Every activity which you do, you start enjoying. Every activity when you do, you keep enjoying it so that it is never a trouble for you. We can reach that level. That reaching that level is the 8th step in Samadhi. That is not to be practiced, not to be trained, but it has to be reached. Reached. You will reach them after some time. So these are the different steps and will take you here. And once you do this, you become a yogi. And who is a yogi? Yogi is a person who does everything in his life. But in meditative stage. And your course here is what? Personality development. So what is personality development? <coughs> Assume in five days your personality is developed. <laughs> Great, no? In mathematics, if you keep on increasing, after that, again if you can increase further, Again take it further, we take it into infinite, extreme, supreme. Maximum is called supreme or extreme, right? Suppose you keep on developing your personality, you become, what personality? Keep on developing your personality, personality development, keep on developing it. So what will happen? You will become supreme personality. Who is supreme personality? Fully developed personality. Who is supreme personality? God. 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 So after personality development course, what certificate you should get? <laughs> I certify that so and so is a God. <laughs> Correct, no? Suppose your personality goes and then you reach supreme personality, you become God. That is what is meant by yoga. Yoga is becoming God. But you become God. Join with God. Yoga means joining. What is God? Joining with God. So you join with God. When you join with God, you yourself become God. So that stage of Samadhi is you do everything as if God is doing it. That means what? You have no selfishness that you are doing it for. You, but you are doing it because, because you are asked to do. Who is asking you to do? God is asking you to do. What is that he is asking you to do? Give lecture, so he is giving lecture. Why are you learning? Because God is asking you to learn. Why are you sitting here? Because God is asking you to do it. Can you do everything surrendering to God? And who is God? Not someone who is sitting in the temple. He is not there. Self. Hridaya Guhara Madhye Kevalam Brahma Matram. Hridaya Guhara Madhye Devana Varshi again. Hridaya Guhara Madhye Kevalam Brahma Matram. Inside your Hridaya there is only Brahma. And that Brahma is God. Can you realize that Brahma? And be creative. Be a God by Himself. Then you will understand whatever you are doing is not done by your brain, not done by your manas, but it is done by your atma. So when you are in that level, you will do everything what your atma says. That's why I said, when you do things with your atma, you will never feel I have done some mistake. Because it is not with your desire, it is not with your brain it is with your atma atma can never do mistakes because atma is equal to god paramatma therefore lord krishna prescribes 
the yoga method. What is that yoga method? Uddhare atmanam atmanam apasade atmaiva nyatmano bandhu atmaiva ripura atmanaha. Lift your manas and reach to do atmanam. From your indriya controlled manas, remove that indriya controlled manas and get it into atmanam. If you don't, what will happen? Your atma will say, what you have done is not correct. You should not have taken ice cream. Who says this? Your atma is telling. Because your manas said to take ice cream. And buddhi said don't eat. Correct no? Always you have fighting. What is the fighting? Manas will say I want ice cream, I want ice cream, I want ice cream. <laughs> buddhi will say don't eat. Because last time you ate you had this thought of problem. They keep on fighting every time. Whom do you listen? You don't know. Sometime you will listen to Buddhi, sometime you will listen to Manas. Both are bad. So what is to be done? Listen to your Atma. And that will become perfect and clear. That will happen only when meditation in action. So reaching Samadhi is also becoming a Atma Purusha. Atmiya Purusha. And that is Yogi and becoming God. So that is the real meaning of Yoga. And to reach that, there are eight Sir, steps. Should we always listen to Buddhi? No. Should we listen to only Manas? No. So, Both are dangerous. Who should we listen? Each one is guided by each other. <laughs> Both are sometimes contradicting. <laughs> That is the step. Once you reach to this level, what I said now, you just ask the question whether to listen to Manas or Buddhi. You have a confusion. When you reach into Samadhi, there is no confusion because both will tell you the same. You understood, no? We have confusion because Manas will tell something, Buddhi will tell something else. What is to be done? Do you, that is why I asked when somebody asked me, Do you want tea? Oh, give me tea. Do you want tea? Yes. Not required. Will you take the tea? Oh, I will take. You want really tea? Not required. <laughs> That's it. When you take your Atma as the Bhogi and the Bhukta, you will not require anything, you will not accept anything, you will not reject anything also. That means, are you satisfied? No, I am not satisfied. Then are you happy? Yes, I am happy. You understood no satisfaction and happiness is different. Then Vivek can control both of them. Yes. That V has to be there. Vijnanam, Vivekam. That is, you know what is good, what is bad. Who is that you? Not your manas, not your buddhi. It is the atma. That's called the realization. That stage is called a realization. You become a realized person. And that is called realization. What will happen in realization? You will not have to learn the subject. You will know the subject. You will never say, I cannot do anything. You will say, I can do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You will do everything. Jesus. Will you take your energy and force? Yes, I will do it. How do you do it? Without reservation. No laziness. No second thought. Jump into action. <coughs> you think, next time you jump into action. Now today what happens? You will think. Again you will think. Again you will think not to do. Again you will think you want to do it. And how much time you will waste? You will waste a lot of time. And ultimately, you will not do it also. Assume God is with you. Who is asking you to do? God. Will you do two things? He will only tell do it. Why? Because you want to do it. Who asked you to do it? God only asked you to do it. Why are you doing it? God asked me to do it. And along with you, God will be there to support when there is a problem also. When somebody tells you, you should not have done, we can tell, I know, I have done it right. 
I have small children in my hermitage. I am staying in an old age home now. Staying in old age home. Hermitage. I also have young widows, 25 of them. They are small children. They are all nobody there. So they come, the small children come. I tell them, your skirt look very dirty. I tell them, your skirt look very dirty. I tell them at their face, what will happen to a small girl if you tell your skirt is dirty? Feel sad. Feel sad, right? You know what do I teach them? If anybody tell you like that, you must tell, I know my skirt is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I will teach them. What do I teach? You should tell them, I know my skirt is beautiful. Suppose you know your skirt is beautiful. If somebody else tells it is bad, will you feel hurt? <laughs> Correct, no? If somebody tells me your hairstyle is not good, I say, I know my hairstyle is good. I know I am handsome. I know this looks beautiful. You must have self-confidence. Dignity in you. Never surrender to someone's comments. The time you surrender to someone comments, you are surrendering yourself. Why you must listen to somebody and tell you that you are great? You must tell yourself you are great. Understood? I must feel, yes, I have done my job good. I am doing my job good. Congratulations, well done, my Kumar, you are great. <laughs> Can we tell ourselves, I am great? How many of you feel that you are great? How many of you feel you are great? I will have second question. Eh? If somebody feels they are great, I will have second question. How many of you feel you are great? Why? Whatever I feel is perfect and right. Hundred percent? Yes. Good. Sit down. Next. Suppose you don't do anything. See, whatever you are doing is a close. Why do you add a close? Instead of that, I will do everything. Not whatever. You, when you do, you are doing many things. But whatever you do when you say you are taking only few good things and categorizing, that is what I am doing. Understood? Yeah, why do you feel you are great? Why? Sabhi kaam kar sakte. Sabhi kaam See, I have a small poetry book. This is my poem. 27 poetry in, in English. Okay. The one of the first one is Raise for Birth. Raise for Birth. Raise for Birth is a poetry in which I explain how do we take birth. Millions of sperms, millions of sperms from the father get into the mother's egg and only one sperm takes the birth. And who is that? I. Each one of us, right? How many sperms did not take birth? Millions of them. Who are they? They are my unborn brothers and sisters. So to take birth, what we have done? We raised for birth. We have run faster, therefore we got the birth. Whom did we fight for taking birth? Our own closest relative. So taking birth itself is a great activity which we have done. So don't we feel great? Raise your hands up, all of you. Take it back and say well done. At least now. Is it not? You must feel that, yes, I have done great. So if you can raise millions, do you think raising somebody is a big job? Easier. Life is very easier. I get hundreds and thousands of questions with my kids. This is a book which is taken out of Orkut. You know what's Orkut? Internet. On internet it's a social network community. So I call my students on internet as netizens, not citizens. Netizens. 
So this is a discussion between me and my netizens. In this discussion, what happens is they will ask me questions. You open any page, it's a book which can be read very easily. Open a page, you will have one question. What is life? So I will write what is life. He will write oath. I don't agree, this is not life. I will explain again. So this is a discussion between me and them. Whatever I have written is left justified, whatever they write is justified, both are written. Somebody says, I don't agree with you, that's also there inside. Somebody says, I agree with you, that's also there. See, what is life? Heading of the title itself is what is life. So, one page, one or two pages, not more than that. Am I progressing? Can I measure that I am progressing in my life? What is progressing in life? Small question and an answer for that and a comment for that. And there will be definitely some Sanskrit slokas, quotation. Because without that I cannot be there. Faith in your own self. Do you have faith in you that you can do many things? I will write some paragraph. Somebody will ask me a question. What is character? And what is behavior? What is buddhi and manas? What is the difference between that? I love my mummy. Why? Role, goal, value, balancing. Whatever I have given you. Sometimes whatever I use in my lecture also I write here. Or sometimes whatever I give in my lecture comes here. <coughs> Both way. The next book is in writing Life is to Live. That's going to be not a discussion but a philosophical book. Possessiveness is natural because we talked about sacrifice. So whatever we possess only we can sacrifice. This is one. So this is another book. This costs 200, this costs 130 rupees. I don't have copies. Yet. And these are my lectures must be there. I have just copied last time. You can copy and use it. This have meditation and also subjects, inculcation of values, leadership qualities and yoga. Really, your lecture will be very fruitful to us. I assure, I myself would try my level best to follow the instructions and make the students familiar with it. Sir, I also composed today one poem and I also showed our weaknesses which you caught at the first sight and I would like to recite that poem that is Really we were like diseased, ma diseased mat matured plants of our Vidyalaya when I later got some uh, matter went into my mind and today in the morning I thought to compose one poem. Really we were like diseased matured plants of our Vidyalaya. So the gardeners, the Samiti people, gardeners, Samiti people, so the gardeners for treatment sent to this Asdhalya hospital as we were diseased plants, we were having many drawbacks. So Samiti people sent us to this Asdhalya and got our disease that we, we are not so prompt in leadership. We should have made our groups mixing together and uh, sir instructed and we did to get why we have been sent here to get the spray of some nutrients and insecticide. To get the spray of some nutrients and insecticide so that, so that to them we may better yielding provide. So that we may to them yielding provide. That's why they sent it to this in Australia. And we got all the spray and insecticide to remove our diseases. <laughs> Here doctor, psychologist, scientist, educationists are giving us treatment. Here doctor, psychologist, scientist, educationists are giving us treatment with their expertise doing their best for our betterment. Being refurbished or repolished, being refurbished or repolished by them in different colors, we will go back to our native garden our Vidyalaya, we will go back to our native garden to receive great honors. To the NLI on behalf of all 
plants on behalf of all teachers. I extend gratitude to the NLI on behalf of all plants. I extend gratitude for treating us at their level best, showing tribute. May God bless this institute with more and more facility to be offered to the coming patients and to give its continuity. Thank you, sir. You have removed most of our diseases. <coughs> I thank you a lot. Sir Radha Krishna, sir, like a true guardian, you have been sitting here and watching our activities, but you are not controlling but giving us opportunity to express ourselves, to bloom ourselves. That is a very great quality of a guardian, sir. And again, I thank you. I thank you, sir. I came to know that uh, I am forgetting sir's name. <laughs> Bala Krishna, sir, who also sat here with patience and have, uh, heard his sir's lecture. Really. So after giving back uh, uh, our friend is coming here, he, he took one day leave and he came here to attend the session. Just to see. Mm, sir, your arrival. <laughs> sir, your, your arrival and sitting here added to our uh, uh, flavor or our uh, bravery or our courage. And really, I thank you, sir. And I thank all my friends English, for listening to the lectures and favoring me because I am the leader of today's group. Thank you all and at last I um, thank the members of my group who cooperated, who shared or who shared my burden on their shoulders. Thank you all sir. Thank you all.